talk about that. Um, so yeah, we want to make sure that we come to court prepared. It's, it's really an open book test. It's an open book test. Like I said, the Father has equipped us uh, with all the tools that we need. We just need to be submissive and obedient, learn his laws, and we will be uh, effective in prayer and you will have a, a very effective prayer life. All right, so number two is that when we pray, we are using the authority that has been given to us by the Father as a kingdom citizen. So again, you know, if we do not go through the process of self-discovery, knowing who we are, knowing the benefits that we have now that we are kingdom citizens, then we may not be as effective when we're praying because we will not be utilizing um, all of the, the full authority that has been given to us by the Father. So we need to make sure that we, uh, we learn the laws of the kingdom. All right, and then number three, in order for our prayers to be effective, we must eliminate ignorance, unbelief, and doubt. Dr. Renee did an awesome job touching on this. So I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on this, but it is vitally important that we uh, do not allow ignorance, unbelief, and doubt to block or hinder our prayers. It, I mean, your case will immediately get thrown out. If any of these things are present, if we aren't aware of the laws that, uh, you know, that apply when we're praying and, you know, since we're using this, this courtroom analogy, I mean, just think about it. Think about how many years people go to school, um, to learn, to be, to learn, to be a lawyer and think about how difficult it is to pass, you know, the, the bar and, you know, just so that you can get to court and to present your case. We should be that much more committed as kingdom ambassadors to learn the laws of the kingdom. The father, he established everything to work according to law, work according to, you know, different principles. Uh, think about, you know, think about an airplane, for example, and, you know, an airplane, however many thousands of pounds that it is, that it can lift up off the ground and stay suspended in the air. How's that so when you have the law of gravity, which says that what comes up must come down, right? That's one of the you know first laws that I remember learning in science class back in the day. But there is another law that supersedes when you have the law of lift and the law of thrust, those working together overpower the law of gravity. It's the same thing as kingdom ambassadors. You know, even though we're living in this world that is overrun with sin, with death, um, you know, Yeshua himself, he, because he came back and because he uh, was, went through the process um, was resurrected from the dead, we now have restoration. We have been restored so that, you know, that's why the scripture talks about um, where it says greater works you will do. It's because now we have been restored. So there is a law that's within us that supersedes the law of death and of sin. And we are able to conquer our circumstances and uh, anything that may come our way that that applies to poverty right? So, but a, a big thing that comes to that, you know, because that's something that people often pray about is, you know, provisions. Well, we need to learn the laws that apply to provisions. Uh, we need to be obedient, learn the laws of tithing, right? Are you a faithful sower? Um, if so, then when there is something that uh, comes up and I'll, you know, I'll give an example. My husband and I, we are in business and we recently had a situation where, um, the entity that we were working with, they didn't give us all of the money that we were owed. Right. And so we had to petition father. We thank you. We give you praise. First of all, we acknowledge you as our owner. We acknowledge you as the one that we're in covenant with for uh, your provisions, your peace and your protection. We thank you that as faithful tithers, that your word says you will rebuke the devourer on our behalf. And, and we just continue, you know, in that way, that's, that's how we come to the father. We bring back his word. We remind him of his promises. Not that he forgot. <laughs> it's not that he forgot, but it's that 
when we speak, our words are powerful. They, uh, they are spirit and they are life. And so that is why it's an important, that is why it's important um, for us to speak the word and to be repeaters of the law. That is what prayer is all about, being a repeater of the law. Um, and that when we're communicating with the father, that we're doing it with full knowledge of the kingdom, our rights, um, and our privileges. Okay. All right. And so let's see, we're on number four. Um, when we pray, we must have the right motives and approach. Um, you know, when I, when I think about this, I think about my son, uh, who is just two years old. And, you know, right now, anytime he comes to me, mama, 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 he want, I, mama, I want this, mama, I want French fries. I want this, I want that. Um, but, you know, as he grows and as he develops, that's going to change. And it should be the same way when it comes to the kingdom. Like the more that we grow, the less selfish that we should be. Because after all, we're not here, you know, even though we are, um, living in living on earth as kingdom ambassadors it is our responsibility it is our calling to learn the laws of the kingdom and make earth look just like heaven so why is it that a lot of times and when a lot of people pray that is always for stuff why is that so you I, I would just encourage you to examine your own heart and examine yourself and say man Am I asking the father for stuff for, for earthly possessions and things every time I come to him? When do I pray? Why do I pray? Right. What is my motive? What is my intent? And uh, we also want to ensure that, you know, our prayer life, that it's not just about us. The father, there are things that he needs done in the earth. Um, I think about Yeshua. Um, you know, <laughs> it's just, it, it's amazing to me. He was just such a great example for us. When we're looking in the scripture, um, when he would pray and he did it often, it would always talk about how he would get up early and, you know, he would kind of duck off and go pray. Or he would tell the disciples, yeah, y'all hold on for a second. I need to pray. He was in constant communication with the father. Um, it wasn't about him. It was about the father and his will. And he was constantly making sure that he was in sync. That is how it should be because there is so much going on in this world. The father is waiting on us. And the only way that we're going to be able to get things done is by learning his laws and by uh, learning who he is, learning his precepts, communing with him, building that intimacy. So prayer is not just, the purpose is not just so that we can get a bill paid or, you know, get a headache healed or, you know, any of that. The, the main thing is that we want to be duplicates and uh, duplicates of heaven, creating that atmosphere in the earth. 